who has never touched her. Um, so, so we've been led to believe that the friar will support Isabella throughout this, um, and now he appears to be backing away from her and saying that he, he doesn't believe that what she says is true. Um, and then he speaks about Friar Lodovic, and he just says that he's a good man, um, and says that he might come to clear himself, to clear his name later, but at the moment he's too sick to speak up in his own defence. Um, and then he, the friar, um, basically just says that he's speaking on behalf of Friar Lodovic because he's sick, um, and says that definitely what Isabella has said is a lie and that he has a woman who can, um, disprove it. And he says that he can so solidly disprove Isabella, um, that she herself will confess to lying. So the Duke says, oh, that's good. Let's do it. Um, so Isabella is carried away and Mariana comes in. Um, and then Mariana has a hood over her head, she has a veil on, and she said that she's not going to take her veil off until her husband tells her to. Um, and the Duke says, well, are you married? Are you, um, are you a widow? And she's none of them. And Lucha intervenes again and calls her a punk, which is a prostitute. Um, and the Duke quite threateningly says, um, silence that fellow, I would he had some cause to prattle for himself, as in he's speaking up to defend or to accuse all these other people, I wish he, I wish he was being tried for something so that I could um, listen to him speak about himself, um, which is foreshadowing of course because we know that the Duke is about to move on to Lucio. Um, so basically then they just go through what happened um, and Mariana says that um, Mariana says that Isabella can't have slept with my husband because I was with him at the time. And Angelo's quite confused by this because, of course, he thinks that he was with Isabella. So he says, is Isabella going around accusing a whole bunch of men, like other men, of sleeping with her? Is she charging more people than me? And Mariana says, not that I know of. Um, and the Duke is like, well, you said your husband. Um who's that? And she said, well, my husband is Angelo. He, he doesn't think he's married to me. He thinks that he, he slept with Isabella, but he knows me. Um, and so Angelo asks her to take her veil off. So she does. Um, and she says, this is that face thou call Angelo, which thou once swore was worth the looking on. This is the hand, which with a vowed contract was fast belocked in mine. This is the body that took away the match from Isabel and did supply thee at thy garden house in her imagined purpose. Um, so she's telling Angelo that it was her um, using that repetition of phrasing for dramatic effect. Um, Angelo says that, yes, he did know her, that five years ago he was engaged to marry her um, and that marriage was broken off partly because she couldn't afford to marry him anymore, her money wasn't as much as he expected, but mostly in chief because her reputation was disvalued. Um, so because there were rumours about her morality, her levity, um, he didn't think she was worth marrying anymore. Um, and Mariana uses a very logical construction in order to prove that she actually is married to him. Firstly, because they had signed the contract and said their vows, um, and then that because they've consummated, consummated the wedding last Tuesday, that means that they're now officially married. Um, and Angelo says, I did but smile till now, as in, this is the funniest thing I've ever heard. This is making me laugh more than I've ever laughed before. Um, and he says to the Duke, give me the scope of justice. My patience here is, is touched. So he's saying, let me be in charge of their punishment because this affects me. Um, and he says, I perceive these poor women are simply instruments of some mightier member that sets them on. So he's struck on the truth of it because, of course, Isabella and Mariana um, were put up to it. But it's ironic because it was actually the Duke himself who is the mightier member who set the women on to Angelo. Um, so the Duke says, yes, absolutely, you can punish them as much as you want. And then he speaks to the absent friar, to himself really. He says, you foolish friar, um, do you think that your oaths um, were testimonies against your worth and credit? Um, so he's saying... 
does the friar really think that his holy vows are um, proof of his quality as a person? And this is quite an interesting thing for the Duke to say, since as we've noticed throughout um, Act 3 and Act 4, the Duke used his vows in order to persuade other people. So he deliberately used his vows um, uh, in order to control Mariana and Isabella in particular. Um, and it was only the provost who asked for something beyond just the fact that he was a priest in order to trust him. Um, so then he just sends for the, fri for the friar to come. Um, and so, obviously, he sends the provost off to get um, the friar. And then obviously, since the Duke is the friar, he needs to leave so that he can get dressed as the friar and come back in. So he says, Angelo, um, since this matter is about about this, you can judge this. Um, and he says, I'm going to go away for a minute, but just stay here until we sort everything out. Um, and Aeschylus says, yes, we will. Um, and then Aeschylus starts um, asking Lucio about Friar Lodovic. And Lucio replies with the Latin phrase that means the cowl does not make the monk. So the cowl is like the outfit that a monk wears. So it's very true in this case. It's more true than Lucio himself knows because, of course, um, the cowl didn't make the monk. The monk was really the duke. Wearing the clothes didn't mean anything. And then he goes on to say, honest in nothing but in his clothes, which is also ironic because the opposite is true. The duke is quite an honest man and it was only really in his clothing that he was dressed up as a as a friar instead of as the duke, that he was dishonest. Um, and so then Aeschylus also calls Isabella in um, to hear her side of the argument again. Um, so um, Lucio makes a bit of a lewd comment about how Aeschylus should deal with Isabella, um, but he makes it sound polite when Aeschylus asks her about it. Um, and then we have Isabella and the provost and the duke as a friar come back in. Um, so Aeschylus says to Isabella, um, hey, here is another woman, Mariana, who denies everything you've said. And Lucio says, hey, here's the um, evil friar. Um, and Aeschylus asks the friar if um, he set the women on to slander Lord Angelo. And the duke says no. Um, and then he says, I should really be talking about this to the Duke. Where's the Duke? And Aeschylus says, the Duke is in us. So we have his authority right now. Um, make sure that you speak justly. Um, and the Duke replies with, um, old poor souls, come you to he seek the lamb here of the fox? As in um, Isabella and Mariana have come looking for the Duke, who is represented by the idea of the lamb. So he's sort of innocent and sweet and pure. Um, and instead they found the fox, they found Angelus, who is, um, who is cunning um, and wicked and has taken the place of the lamb. And he says, good night to your redress, you're not going to get anything out of Angelo. And he says, the Duke's unjust to put your trial in the villain's mouth, which he come to accuse, as in, um, it's really unfair that um, you're being tried by the person who you're actually accusing. Um... And so then Aeschylus explodes into rage um, about the fact that the friar has dared to call the duke unjust. So this kind of rant here demonstrates how heavily slander against a ruler is viewed in the time period. So um, Aeschylus tells the friar that he needs to go to the rack um, and he will be tortured in order to find out why he would say such nasty things about the Duke. And this is just saying unjust. Think about all the things that Lucio said in Act 4 against the, um, against the Duke. So the Duke says, be not so hot, don't overreact. The Duke dare no more stretch this finger of mine than he dare rack his own. Now, that's ironic, of course, because his own fingers are the Duke's fingers. And he says, his subject am I not? I'm not, I'm not underneath the Duke, um, nor he provincial. My business in this state made me a looker-on here in Vienna. So the reason for me being here made me a bystander, not a member of the um, state. And he says, here I have seen corruption boil and bubble till it overrun the stew. There are laws for all faults, but the faults are so approved that the strong statutes, the strong laws, um, are made a mockery of. So the laws are like a joke because the faults that the laws are against are allowed. 
this is quite an interesting speech because everything that the Duke says is actually literally true. Um, it, the Duke would no more stretch the friar's finger than his own because he is the, the Duke. Um, he's not a subject of the Duke because he is the Duke and his business in Vienna at the moment made him a looker on because he did decide that that was the whole point, that he was going to try to watch the goings on of state rather than participate. Um, so Aeschylus responds with more um, sort of strong reaction, slander, take him to prison. Um, but Angelo wants to get to the bottom of this. So he says, no, is this the man who you said um, slandered the Duke? Um, and they have that. And basically Lucio says that the Duke, um, he says that the Duke slandered the Duke, um, which is what Lucio really said about him. Um, and so the Duke calls him on that, says, you must change places with me. You're the one who said that, not me. Um, and then Aeschylus says, there's no point talking to someone who can, who speaks treason like this. Take him away. Um, and the Duke says to the provost, um, don't take me away. And because the provost knows who the friar really is, he knows it's the Duke, so he obeys him. Um, and Angela says, what? Is he resisting arrest? Lucio, you better go help the provost arrest him. And so then um, Lucio gets um, a nice little speech, which probably means that he was running at him um, and jumping around a little bit. Um, and in the tussle, he pulls off the friar's hood and discovers that the friar is actually Duke Vincentio. Um, so the Duke immediately assumes all of his authority and starts dealing with the situation. So he says, first, Provost, let me bail these gentle three. So he saves um, Isabella Mariana and the friar Peter um, from being arrested. Then Lucio tries to sneak away and he says, no, nope, Provost, grab him, don't let him get away. Um, and then, of course, Aeschylus has just ranted at the friar, thinking that it was... Um, some random priest who's been insulting the Duke and the state. And so now he's horrified because he has now committed slander by speaking out against who turned out to be the Duke. But the Duke says, no, no, don't worry about it. You didn't know it was me. Sit down. And then he says to Angelo, have you word or wit or impudence that yet can do you office? So he's saying, are you going to keep pretending that you don't know what's going on or can we just get to the part where I judge you? Um, and Angelo is sort of completely stricken by the fact that everything that he did was watched by the Duke. So he says, um, when I perceive your grace, like power divine hath looked upon my passes. So he's saying that like God, um, the Duke has watched all of his secret inner workings and knows everything about him. And so he says, look, we don't need to have a trial. I confess sentence me to death straight away. I want, I'm ready to die for this. Um, and the Duke responds by calling over Mariana and then sends them off to get married together. Um, Eskos is amazed that Angelo could possibly be a bad person because he's, he seemed so amazing. Um, the Duke then says to Isabella, look, okay, I might be the Duke instead of the friar, but I'm still here in your service. My point is still to help you. Um, is quite apologetic that she has imposed upon such a great figure as the Duke with her little problems. Um, and then the Duke says, um, I know that you're sad because Claudio is dead um, and you wonder why I didn't stop it. Why didn't I reveal that I wasn't really a friar, um, reveal that I was the Duke and um, reveal that Claudio needs to live. He says, well, look, it just happened so fast. It was that swift celerity. It happened too quickly and it brained my purpose. I couldn't react to it quickly enough. And then he says, but you know what? He's better off now. He's in heaven. He's in a better place. He's happier. And Isabella says, okay, I take comfort in that. So Angelo and 